the congressional debate, um, you know, we're in recess right now, so it hasn't really started back yet. But I think there's already outreach efforts going on. As you know, we've had um, challenges in the House in particular with respect to just passing basic legislation. But we've been able to get some things done when necessary. The last week, it just passed the bill, $1 trillion funding bill for uh, keeping the government open. And I'm hoping that this will be the type of tragedy that brings people together instead of um, pushing uh, you know, people into partisan corners. And I'm hoping we can get something mm-hmm. done here relatively quickly. Well, we keep hearing it's different than it was, Congressman, in 2007 following the bridge collapse uh, in Minnesota. And I think I understand what people mean by that. Uh, but do you believe it in this case or can people come together on this? Well, I hope so. I mean, I, I think, um, you know, there was some instances in the past where we've had politicians who've, um, you know, made political stands on, on these kinds of issues. But as my mother used to say, what goes around comes around. And I remember one or two of them having to come back hat in hand when there were, you know, disasters in their states and they needed help. And President Biden stepped up to help them even though they were um, Republicans in and, and red states. So I think we can find a way to do it. And, um, you know, certainly there's a, a, an economic need that's beneficial to the entire country. I mean, you're talking right. $15 million a day, 15,000 jobs. Uh, this is a port that had been, um, I think, a, a quarter of coal exports for the country had been going in and out, uh, going out of this port. So I think it's important for us, you know, regionally and nationally to get this thing done. Well, so, Congressman, what does this mean in the interim for your state of Maryland, for your district? Even if this money was approved tonight, we are told this is not a month's but years long project. You just talked about a potential six week outage for coal. At least we understand the number of autos that come through the Baltimore uh, Harbor, the port could be redistributed to a lot of places. So I know there's a long-term concern about permanent displacement, but what do you do if this is two or three years, the number of jobs that are relying on this? Yeah, I think that's the the question of the hour. I mean, I think we've got the short, medium, and and long-term issues that we have to address. In the short term, I think it's clear in the harbor, uh, getting the packages and the the containers off the, uh, the ship that's stuck there. Uh, so we can move yeah. that and, and the, the, um, the ships that are also stuck in the uh, harbor can move out. Uh, I think we want to try and get uh, shipping back uh, up as soon as possible. Uh, I think in the interim, I think we've got to figure out, you know, what it's actually going to take to rebuild the bridge. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be a new bridge that's next to it or if they're going to try and repair the one that's there. I, I, I don't know if those decisions have been made yet. Um, and I think the long term piece you know, it took five years to build that bridge, as I understand it. And, you know, that's almost 50 mm. years ago. And, you know, there may have been some technological advances, but it's still going to take a long time to get it done. So um, I think we have to figure out how to work uh, around that. We've got commuters uh, who travel in and out of the, their uh, work every day in and out of Baltimore. We've got people who, uh, truckers in particular, have been using that route. They're going to have to find new ways to uh, to move their products. And we've got just, you know, people traveling up and down the Eastern seaboard. So all of that's going to be mm-hmm. challenged. I think we're going to have to look at some sort of intermediate impact uh, assistance to try and help, uh, especially businesses and employees who are getting hammered by this uh, in the near future. And, uh, you know, we'll see what we can do on that front, but I think it's going to be important to see what we can do. Well, I wonder if that might be included in an emergency relief package, uh, Congressman. Is there anything the delegation can do to make permanent the business that exists now in the port of Baltimore? If these cars go to Newark or New York or they go down south, what says they come back? Yeah, I think that's an interesting question. Uh, we're going to have to play it by ear a little bit. I think in the short term, you know, we might be able to provide some sort of subsidies to help these businesses deal with an immediate economic impact. But I think the the a reality of this is that they're going to have to try and you know relocate their businesses to some extent, at least for uh, the period while the uh, port's being restored. Hopefully, we can get that done relatively quickly, though, so there won't have to be any long term changes. I think the bridge is a different question. Uh, businesses that rely on using that bridge uh, for shipping and transporting, that's going to be tougher. Because that's going to take, I would think, at least several years to make that uh, 
a reality. So, uh, but the hope is we can get the port back up and running quickly enough so businesses don't have to take any long-term, uh, you know, uh, steps to uh, revamp or relocate their businesses. We're spending time with Congressman Glenn Ivey of Maryland this day after the bridge collapse. I know this is a big deal locally, Congressman. We're talking about regional and national impact here. But for a lot of folks uh, who live in Baltimore, it was not only a landmark, not only a way to get to work, it was just part of their day-to-day life here supporting businesses that we have been describing. There are six people still unaccounted for. Can you talk to us about the emotional impact that this is having on Maryland? Yeah, yeah, I think um, it's it's really been devastating. I think there's a, uh, people have really been uh, hurt you know, it's cut to the heart, I think, on this. And, you know, people who feel for the families who are grieving, people who feel for the community, which uh, relies so extensively on uh, the economic a- impact uh, that's going to be uh, had by this because they work in, in or around the ports. Um, and I, I think, as you mentioned, the sort of the symbolism of the bridge, just to see it down in the water like that, I think is, um, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's it's heartbreaking for sure. So, there's a symbolic piece of this that's going to be challenging. I think Governor Moore has done an outstanding job of being the healer in charge and, and taking a strong leadership role and, and trying to help us recover, um, certainly economically, but also psychologically and emotionally uh, to the loss that we've sustained here. Do you want to see Joe Biden pay a personal visit? I know Pete Buttigieg has already been there, but would a presidential visit be in order? Uh, you know, we'd love to have the president come. Uh, but frankly, I mean, I, I, the, the most important piece of this so far of everything that's happened uh, since the bridge collapsed was the president's mm-hmm. commitment to make sure that we get uh, the bridge back up and the Fed's going to take the lead in, in restoring it and making sure that the funding is taken care of. The other thing he said that I liked was we're not going to wait for, you know, litigation to, to sort all of this stuff out. Uh, you know, if there's restitution down the road, that's great. But we want to take the lead in getting the bridge up immediately and not have to wait for the courts to work, um, work out who may or may not be liable. 